business, uh, new business, uh, project scope presentation. I'll ask Mayor Britt to proceed with that. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, what we want to do in today's meeting is, is just present um, uh, and basically be the, the public um, unveiling, so to speak, of, of the uh, proposal that the design team has come up with to solve our jail uh, overcrowding uh, issue, and, and so we'll go through um, go through those those ideas and those concepts. Uh, we have the folks from Mosley Architects who will go through the, the detail part of it. Uh, I'll I'll get some history. What led us to this point, talk about the process the design team went through. Uh, then um, mostly architects and their staff will talk about the design itself. And, and, and then uh, we'll talk about um, what happens to the existing building, uh, to this building, and um, to how we pay for it. And we have Chris Bessler from Cumberland Securities here, uh, our financial advisor, who will help with that. And then we also have Dr. Perry here with the school system uh, to answer any questions about their building uh, program. And the financing plan that you'll see uh, tonight includes uh, the fi financing of the West High renovation project to go along with, with the Justice Center project. Um, in your, at your desk, what you will have, or what you should have, is you should have a copy of the presentation. You should have a copy of it. We have the 11 by 17 sheets of the site plan and the, the building uh, concept and design. You should have um, two bond resolutions. One resolution is the initial bond resolution, and then you have a detailed bond resolution, and we'll explain that later on in the presentation. But you should have those in front of you. So those, those are the documents we'll be referring to. Uh, during uh, this presentation. So um, to get started, this is kind of culminating more than five years worth of, of work and study uh, on how to, to, to deal with the, the jail overcrowding as well as other space needs that we have in the uh, court system and uh, also here at the courthouse. So just to go over that a little bit, the lights is um, we the first study that was conducted was done in 2014 and that was conducted by Carter Global Lee and um, the jail concert, consulting firm Carter Global Lee that was done in 2014 the bottom line of their study was that we need to plan for uh, 655 beds to have those in place by the year 2035. That was basically the bottom line. Then in 2015, the next year, we asked the National Institute of Corrections to come in and um, uh, meet with, uh, they met with uh, jail staff, uh, toured the jail, they met with county commissioners, with the judges, the, the DA and the public defender, uh, TCI was in the room. Uh, we, were, we, we were all at the health department together and discussed uh, the criminal justice system uh, alternative sentencing, uh, programs like Jail to Work, which we implemented later, uh, those types of things were discussed with all the uh, stakeholders and came away with some, some uh, recommendations there and we'll touch on those. And then in, in 2015, uh, Sheriff Jarnigan and myself and Captain Laws and Rick Eldridge, who was chairman of the Jail Study Committee at the time, went to Colorado and attended uh, the National Institute of Corrections PONY program, which is planning of a new institution. And it basically trained us and, and uh, helped us uh, learn about how to go through the, the uh, process that we're going through now. And then in 2017 was phase one of the Mosley contract where they did uh, an analysis and a study of, of our jail population and what to expect. And we came away with, with uh, a bed projection of 634 beds from, from that. Now, last week, what, what I did is I took the, the methodology that Mosley used and applied it to our current uh, average daily population. Our, 
through um, September, from January to September of 2019, our average daily population is 435 people. So to uh, prop to I guess project what bed space we need today is uh, you add for proper classification you add 20 percent to that so we added 20 percent uh, to that 435 and then to plan for peak periods it's another 10 percent so we added 10 percent to that and so that came to the number of 574 so today we we need 574 beds so that's that's just to give you a little uh, I guess a, a an idea of, of what our need is today and, and what we're trying to do is plan for, for uh, years to come. So in space recommendations from all these studies, uh, roughly we need to plan for over 625 beds uh, by 2035. Four courtrooms were recommended and more space for the Sheriff's Department. Those were among the recommendations that came from the studies. And then you had the NIC priorities in their report, which was plan long term, do long term planning, uh, help with inmate transition, some transitional housing, instead of just doing what we've been doing. And, and we started that with the jail work program. It'll be two years old come December, and uh, where we're working with women coming out of jail in the partnership with Helen Ross McNabb and, and the state and then improve working conditions for the corrections officers. And a new facility will, will improve that uh, tremendously. So uh, here's some more history. Last spring in March of 2019, the commission basically gave, um, we, we hired Mosley Architect for phase three to do, start the design work. <clears throat> and the commission gave us a, uh, some marching orders. And that was basically look at 500 beds. Uh, we'll use 100 beds that's in the annex, first and second floor of the annex, and we'll develop 24 uh, beds in reentry programming. So, and then two courtrooms and a multi purpose room. That's what we were instructed to do. But in the meantime, what happened between March and September was uh, during this process, we discovered some things that. The design team took into account and, and basically changed the scope. Is we found that the second floor of the annex cannot be used for housing unless we basically remove it and rebuild it, and that's because of the, the wood, uh, the, the uh, plywood sheeting for the roofing, and the plywood that's in the walls, and that violates the codes, and so we can't uh, <coughs> second floor. For housing, which was our original plan. Then also the workhouse, um, for us to use it for confined housing uh, and to continue to use it, it would need major renovation uh, because it, it has a wood ceiling and again that's combustible material which can't be used in those types of housing facilities. So for confinement we couldn't use it for a re-entry program without which the, the folks could come and go as, as, as they please and without any uh, supervision uh, by correction staff, then we could use that for re-entry with some modification. Uh, but the question is, do we want to spend the money, uh, and the question that we faced as a design team, do, do we want to recommend spending the money on the second floor, rebuilding the second floor and renovating the workhouse or do we want to put that money into a new building? And so that's that's the uh, the direction that we went as a design team, along with concerns that some of you had that 500 beds wasn't enough, and the space and the land we have over there wasn't enough to handle our needs. So all those all those facts went into the discussion and and coming up with the solution that you'll see tonight. So those are some things that we learned during this process. Now, the design team took a long-term approach to solving our, our space needs. We didn't want to come to you with an idea that in 10 years we're going to have to revisit uh, in a major way. And so uh, the scope expanded 
so that we would we would meet those long term needs. Now we're talking forty to fifty years, and is is kind of the horizon we were looking at. And we used we got input from uh, jail staff, from the judges, from CTAS. Jim Hart was in on a couple of meetings. Uh, TCI had representatives at a couple of meetings. We had a one on one on one meeting with the judges. Uh, one on one meeting with court security. We had. Um, Circuit Court Clerk, Teresa West was in two or three meetings. Um, we had Human Court Services represented, as well as the architects and engineers. And then we had, I had some meetings with the financial advisor. And uh, we started talking about how we're gonna pay for these, these projects. And so it was about 12 meetings in all, if you count personal meetings, if you count uh, webinars or uh, meetings that we had with the Mosley staff uh, where we worked over the telephone and, and, and using the new uh, type of technology and then uh, we had also just some telephone uh, meetings and telephone conversations. So we had, there was a lot of input, a lot of work went into putting this, this plan together. So here's the scope. Uh, the scope of the project is uh, 186,000 square feet. And that's uh, justice system space and housing space. And 586 new beds and uh, 32 <coughs> beds in the first floor of the annex. We can use the first floor of the annex with some modifications, uh, some small renovations. Uh, 24 beds of reentry, so we'll have to grow our reentry program. We need a male reentry program. And so we've been we've been working on that, and right now well, our our stumbling block is we don't have anywhere to go right now, and so we've got we've got to talk and work that that out. Three courtrooms in this in this proposal we're moving all the uh, criminal courts into this building, uh, the civil sessions court is moving into this building, the circuit uh, courts uh, will be in this building and juvenile court will be in this building. All the courts will be in the new building except for Chancery Court, which will continue to meet in here, and right now, um, uh, Child Support Court. So that's that's what we're, we're talking about as far as what would take place um, in that building. Then you would have a consolidated clerk space. The circuit court clerk's office would be consolidated. They now have two locations. It would be consolidated into the new building, and then uh, the clerk would divide the space up for the different functions. Uh, the juvenile clerk area, the, uh, the civil area, both sessions and circuit, and then the criminal area, both sessions and circuit. And then you have a, a community, uh, the community corrections office, which is Don Baird head that, that department up. Uh, we have an area for there. It's close to the courts because they work uh, very closely with uh, the criminal courts in both sessions and, uh, and circuit. And then we have a judge's office suite. And then we also have 135 new parking spaces. And that goes along. We lose a few parking spaces uh, in the project, but we we more than and that we're developing more than we're losing, plus we have uh, some existing parking. The total parking will be about 225 parking spaces in the complex. So I'm going to turn this over to, uh, to Dan of, of Mosley, and, and uh, they'll go into the, the detail of the design. Chairman, Commissioner, uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, bring you uh, up to speed with where we are and the progress of the project. Uh, before I introduce my, my team members, uh, who will go into more detail, uh, I just wanted to remind you uh, of several factors that we were challenged with in order to uh, develop the design that you'll be seeing today. Uh, one, the first and foremost, our priority was to create a new facility that was safe and secure for the staff, uh, the public, and the inmates that would occupy the facility. That was our one overriding uh, priority that we uh, create a facility that would, would maximize the safety of the facility. 
Another one was the use of quality, low maintenance materials and building systems. We didn't want to put a cheap roof on the building. We want to use uh, low maintenance mechanical systems and uh, exterior veneer systems that were low maintenance and durable for, for the long term. Uh, so we're not going to uh, scrimp on that. Uh, another one, uh, equally as important, is a design that would uh, maximize the efficiency of staffing the facility. Uh, so what Brian will be sharing with you shortly is what we call a radial or spindle housing design uh, that would minimize the amount of staffing uh, that it would take to safely and securely operate the facility. Uh, another thing is consolidating, and Bill was talking about adding the courtrooms. Uh, the advantage of doing that into this what we call a justice center concept is that you would not have to transport uh, the prisoners in a vehicle uh, to and from the facility. You could actually uh, access the courtroom securely uh, and directly from the house. Uh, so those are some of our overall guidelines. Uh, that we're uh, excited to share with you today. I would like to introduce uh, my team that's here with me today. Todd Davis is our Director of Criminal Justice Consulting. Y'all have met with Todd before. He's a former jail administrator. Uh, so he approaches and influences our design team from an actual jail operation standpoint. And we take this uh, efficiency very, very seriously. Uh, to his left, Brian Payne is our project manager. And uh, I'd like to bring uh, Brian up right now to kind of walk you through the building, orient you, and talk about uh, what we've got today um, in terms of the design of the facility. Right? Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor, for having us here today. I'm going to do my best to try to work this thing and walk you guys through. I've got two screens on either side of me, so I'll try, I'll try to point to both sides so everyone can see it. But um, this is the overall site plan of the, of the complex. Let me kind of orient you. This is North 3rd Street. This is Jackson Street. This is the existing EMS building here, the existing Justice Center, and the existing Workhouse 911 uh, complex. Sorry, guys. We'll do it again. North 3rd Street, Jackson Street, the EMS building. The existing Justice Center and the existing Workhouse 911 Center there. Um, so the new building that we have designed, the concept we've come up with, uh, sits on, is sited on the existing property that you guys have acquired here. Um, it consists of a multi-story uh, housing and core building for the jail, and then a single-story administrative building. Again, multi-story housing and core building and a single-story administrative and court building uh, there. The main public entry is here. We've noted it with an arrow uh, that you can see. And this is all new parking that we have developed along here. Um, this is the main point of public entry off that parking lot. So it's a single point of entry. Anybody coming to this facility would enter through the front door there at that location. Um, anyone coming to the facility for intake and things like that, this is the vehicle sally port in this location. And vehicles would come in uh, this new driveway here and be within this, uh, the secure fence perimeter of the building. Again, that's the vehicle sally port and that's the secure fence perimeter of the building there. Um, again, this is a multi-story housing and core building, the lowest level. Um, is your uh, jail intake, booking intake, medical area, uh, kitchen and laundry facilities. And then working up from there, the first floor begins your housing. Um, and then that's on the same level as your court and administrative uh, portion of the building here. Again, first floor housing and same level as your court and administrative there. And then over housing, over the darker beige area there, there's two more floors of housing. So there's three floors of housing in total, and on the lowest level of that core, that four-story core, is the book and intake kitchen and laundry facilities, if that makes sense. Okay. We'll kind of walk through the building floor plans here, and I'll highlight the major areas so you guys can get um, a little more familiar with the design. It's in your packet there if you want to flip along with me. This is the lowest level of the building, 
and this is the same area here as, as, as in the dark beige uh, area where you're playing here. So the lowest level is where your booking and intake area is here. That's your the lighter gray area that you see right in here. The medical area is a little bit darker gray right above it, right in this area here. And then a little bit in the light blue there is, is a little bit of your mag the magistrate area. The, the darker brown across the corner here is your kitchen and laundry facility. The main elevators uh, that takes you up in the, in the housing core, they are located right here. And then we've got an elevator and a uh, court holding on this level that will take you up to secure holding between the court rooms at that level. Okay. So that's the, ma the major areas of that floor of the building. Going up one floor, again, that lower level of booking intake is below this uh, housing core here, below this housing core here, and then this is the, this is the one-story courts and jail administrative portion of the building here. Again, uh, Dan had made, mentioned that this is a radial design concept. In other words, there's a, a secure sally port uh, right in the center of the, of the concept, and each housing pod opens onto that concept, or onto that, uh, that center, that center um, sally port. Okay? There is an uh, a elevated um, control station for the officers to observe into each one of the housing pods just above that diamond-shaped uh, salad hole there in the core of the housing area. That's replicated on, on the floors above it as well, so you'll see that as we walk through. Okay? Walking through the one-story uh, administrative and court space, again, this is the main public entry point to the facility here. Main public entrance here. Everyone would come into the building and go through a screening and security checkpoint there. Uh, there'd be an officer stationed there with magnetometers and x-ray machines and stuff, so anyone coming into the building would go through a security screening at that point before they get into any other portion of the building. Off to the right, <coughs> off that main public lobby is video visitation area, and off to the left in the in light blue area is the jail administrator, uh, jail administration <coughs> office area for that. Public restrooms are right off the core, and a, an attorney uh, visitation and contact are, are right behind that area. So, uh, again, <coughs> attorneys could come directly into that area for visitation and not have to wander in through the rest of the building there. We created a center main quarter right down um, the spine of the building there, running plan north and south, as you see on your, uh, oriented on your paper. And everything that the public has to come to this building for is oriented off of that main corridor. So courts, uh, clerk court, uh, community services, everything is accessible off that main court. Um, there's clear line of sight from the security station directly down that main corridor. Off to the right hand side of that corridor there in the, in the brown on your uh, paper there is the clerk of courts <coughs> um, with multiple multiple lobbies for the various functions that the clerk uh, has. Off to the left-hand side of that main quarter are your courtrooms. Like uh, Mayor Britton said, there are three courtrooms. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And the green space between those two courtrooms is your uh, secure court holding for inmates. Inmates come up from the lowest level up into that area and for secure holding and that's that's as far as they can go until they're actually need to go to the court. So there's there's no there's no circulation for inmates. Uh, we have we have made a strong point of um, uh, separate delineations between public movement in the building, secure inmate movement of the building, and then staff and judicial staff specifically uh, separating those three lines of travel in the building. Um, back in the back portion of the court, uh, courts area here, you'll see multiple offices. That's judicial offices for the judges and their administrative staff. They circulate on, on the, the back quarter behind, behind the courtrooms there. So that's their uh, quarter of traffic, which is separate from the public. And inmates, inmates come up from below into the green area there between the courts. Okay? 
the yellow area here is the community services group that uh, Mayor Brandon mentioned earlier. Okay. All right. Moving up to the other two floors. Which are, are, are you taking questions now? Or? I, I can do that now. Uh, uh, would you describe uh, the uh, rec areas? Uh, you've got one rec area near the front of the entrance. What uh, 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 steps have you taken to keep uh, Calvin going into that area from the outside? Okay. How, just describe how it's constructed. I mean, the walls are there. Okay. So, um, to your point, Commissioner, each one of the housing pods, you'll see these areas of blue off to the ends of the housing pod here. There's a separate rec yard designated for each housing pod. So, so for instance, this area here, there's a housing pod on the right-hand side and a housing pod on the left-hand side. Each one has their separate rec yard at the end of that. So there's no, there's no sharing of rec yards between the housing pods. Um, we like to do that because it lessens the move, inmate movement in the facility. You don't have to take them out of their housing pods and take them down the hall to the rec yard. They, they, can, they can circulate back and forth within the housing pod and still be confined. Um, and so each housing pod, as you'll see um, as we go up through the housing building, has rec yards at the end in the, in the light room there. That's constructed um, with concrete block walls surrounding it. And then there'll be very high um, windows and, and a metal net wire mesh that allows fresh air and stuff. They're high, they're above <coughs> your head, so you can't you can't throw contraband in and out there above your head. And, and because this is a multi-story building, it's going to be significantly high, higher above grade. All right, thank you. So we'll go up to the other two floors, which are pretty close to being identical um, to the housing that you see. I will I will say this. Um, each one of these housing pods has a mezzanine level above it that you'll see. So there are, there are double bunk cells on the main floor of a housing pod, and then there is a mezzanine above that that gives you multiple cells up there as well. So those are double bunk cells as well. So each one of these larger housing pods is a 40-man pod. It holds 39 specifically because we have an accessible pod as well. And then the smaller pods off to the left are a 20-man pod. Uh, that, that gives me some, the, uh, the sheriff's staff some variety for classification purposes and things of that nature. Okay. And so as we move up to level two, oh, and I, sh I should also point out, I'm sorry, the control station for the officers is in the center there above the Sally Port below. There's a separate stair here in this area to, to allow those officers to circulate up to the control space. Uh, so in the in the glazing on those walls down into each one of the housing pods so for full observation of, of, of the housing pod. How many personnel is recommended to uh, watch? You got to answer that. Uh, I'm like a um, typically, depending on how many of those housing units are ma are are full at the time, if you if you're looking at having every housing unit occupied. You're probably looking at two to three officers in there looking into that. Typically, you have one to every two. So if you, you see two, four, six units there, mm -hmm. three at the most probably would vary at night. C task is who will do ultimately do the uh, the staffing analysis for the desired design. But, uh, you would limit that at night, where if you had three in there during the day, you'd probably scale back to two at night because they're locked back in their cells. Move it up to level two. Again, the second floor of housing, very similar to what you saw on level one. <coughs> same number of pods, uh, same number of, of housing units there. A mezzanine above that. And then there's a third floor of housing where the left hand side is still 20 man um, double, double bunk cells. However, the two larger, uh, larger pods on either end in this area, this design is, is going to the dormitory style. Uh, so it's still a 40 man, 40 man pod, but it's not, it's not a double bunk cell. It's, a, it's an open door. Does your observation tower control all three <coughs> stories? There's a, there is a control room on each one of the stories, on each one of the floors. Yes, sir. Control room on each 
Yes, there's a control room on each floor and on the main floor of the building in this area, there's a master control for the entire and You said there'd be three people in each control station during the day? Yes, sir. Yes. Two at night. Yes, sir. Right. That it's a mezzanine level on each one of those, yeah. and so that control room, you're actually looking straight into the upper level and down into the lower okay. level. Okay. So, you're right so then when you come to your other level, then you've got, got another one stacked on top of that. That's right. Kind of like an airport control tower. Right in the lake. It's kind of what it looks like. In a previous version that we had seen, there were, um, the sales were larger than they had to be. Has this been adjusted to where this is the minimum? Size of a That's cell. the minimum size for the TCI compliant chest. Which is what? Um, 70 square foot, if I remember right off the top of my head. I, I may be quoting that wrong. I've, I forgot right off the top of my head, but it, it meets the minimum. 8 to 10. I'm sorry? 8 to 10. Again, I can't. It, it mean, whatever that minimum is, I'm sorry, I don't remember right off the top of my head. But then a coffee can, if I'm not mistaken, they were like, Cut off just a little short, Mayor. Am I right on that? The kind of coffee can they were cut off like a foot too short to form the to pass. The yeah. yeah, yeah. Another thing we've been discussing is these are uh, pre-engineered pre steel modular cell units, so every one will be certainly identical to the next ones. What it allows us to do is actually shrink the perimeter of the building because the demising walls is much less than if you build it out of concrete block or precast. Uh, so the whole building can get get smaller uh, and, and more efficient. Those are and, they, and those those pre-manufactured cells are, are lighter as well too. So we have we have to we get less structure to support. Right. And that, that's what they were doing. Coffee can pre man and they were like one foot too short for to pass. During the during the design process, we had TCI involved, and so every one of those cells are exactly what TCI standard says by size for two man oxy has to be. Right. And as we move through the design process, they will be involved to review the plans and we will confirm that size as we move forward. And um, that's what Tim was referring to. They have built them out. They have put another unit, a uh, little. Was uh, that a closet or something? It was some type of. The commode and shower will pick up the space and make yes. a difference. Yeah, they're also unencumbered. Yeah. There's an unencumbered right. space. I just don't want to run into a problem. Right. Right. We're, we're not going to have a nice one. I can do it. Any other questions that I'm going to entertain that we've got next year concepts um, that we can kind of show you and walk through if you, if you want to move to that. What's the escape if needed in the selling port for the you want to go to see each, each floor? Is there a hopefully never but an escape hatch that we need in the main fire? Yeah, uh, you're talking about for the for the staff yeah, in the control room? Yes, yeah. yeah. the safety of the staff in, in the control room or the cell port on this floor. Um, you know, in the worst case scenario. Yeah, so, we're, you know, so what what you typically do in, in a fire situation in a facility like this is is they they move from one housing pot, they move in base from one housing pot to the next. Uh, and then, you know, as the fire may move forward, we move them to the next. You, you never want to release them to the yard. That's the last resort uh, uh, type situation. So there will be smoke compartments as we move through the design. We'll, we'll design smoke compartments in the building to allow that um, movement within the building to occur. Now he's talking about the staff that attend the observation deck. Because one of the facilities that we visited, that was a major concern they had, is should an inmate get in that area, yes. then then how could that, that the staff person get out? <laughs> yeah. I got you what you're saying. Um, so what we have what we have done typically in these um, um, control rooms is there's a single entrance but those doors are controlled by security. So and and each one of the control rooms can take over the other control room. That, so there's redundancy there in who can control it. Like master control can, can override and take over any of the other control rooms, if that makes sense. So if there was a problem in those control rooms and they for somehow got into that, um, then they could take that offline and still maintain control of it. 
one way in, one way out in the control room? Yeah, yes. the way these are, it's one way in and one way out. However, to get in there, you have to go through an interlock system. Correct. The doors, you just don't open one door and you're in there. Right. You have to go through a sequential operation with cameras and intercoms for identification. So I, I, it's just a concern. Yeah, I, say, say, you know, someone get in there and you have a bridge and that, that person is trapped in there. Is there, there is, right, there, there is a, a toilet that would be secured. So they have a refuge to go in there, but they're basically going to hold in place until uh, that issue can be addressed. If it was in a highly unlikely event that were to happen. I agree, I agree. I don't know if it's just a, yeah, we also designed a security electronic system in that control room so the officers in there, if a breach of security happens to happen, they can actually hit one button and it disables that control panel. So if the inmate's in there, he can't open any other doors, he can't release any other inmates. Uh, we, we've kind of found one way in and one way out is the most secure way to operate. Because uh, staff, you got, uh, even if you have a a, I don't know if you want to call it an escape route to get out of there. That's another door that an inmate could get through if it's not secure. So one way in, one way out is the best way to have that. I have a question on, uh, on level, the first level. I don't see any showers. So will those inmates have to go up and use the next level of showers? So in each one of the housing pods on the main level of that housing pod, there are showers in this right. kind of close to the, to the diamond there, the, south, the main entrance of the housing pod. So the inmates on the mezzanine level of that housing pod would come down to use the showers on that come level down, right. within that housing pod. And they would be transported by stairs? Yeah, and there's a, there's a stair right there uh, up to the mezzanine within each, within each housing pod. I don't see an elevator, so it's all It's all self-contained. The housing policy. Yeah, there's no elevator required. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, one of the things that the reason those showers are up so close to the, where the control can see those is if you've heard about the uh, Prison Rape Elimination Act or PREA, uh, it's a, a pretty much a national guideline for uh, design and mostly operationally uh, how you would design these things so the inmates and the officers can increase their observation and safety. One of the shower areas are one of the biggest areas of concern because you have to have amount of privacy, but you still need to be able to visually identify if someone is, is in there, but you just have a window of privacy that you have to maintain. So we look at sight lines to make sure that that can uh, happen and, and still that the ob observers of the unit can know if someone's in there uh, to protect the occupants of the if, when you were talking about the uh, observation room or control room, it's on the same level as the mezzanine? Yes, sir. Okay, what about your sight line of the cells below that? So the windows uh, on the perimeter wall of the control room are actually tilted in slightly, so you have full observation downward and, and you, can the the cell. you can see. Yes, yeah. sir. We, uh, we typically do uh, a 3D design so you know folks involved can actually sit in the chairs within that control station and look out and see what an officer would see. Uh, it's so a lot easier to look down and get better sight lines than trying to look up sure. and still see inside the center. Right. So that's why we do it. Like that. <clears throat> Shall I go into the exterior so you guys can kind of see the concept of where we're thinking about going with it? Yeah, each floor level also has, I know we didn't mention it, that little residual where the elevators are. We have program space there. So clergy could come, multi-purpose space. You could have uh, programs that come in there to help try to reduce recidivism uh, for those inmates. Again, the idea is not, tr not to have to move them all the way through the facility as much as you can. Again, that creates more staff efficiency. Anytime, uh, and, and safety also, anytime you're having to move them through a facility, that's you know, your likelihood of something to happen increases. So everything's brought right to those housing units uh, in this design. So here are, here are a few exterior uh, renderings of what the facility might look like. Um, this is early design concept that uh, we've shared with the county. Uh, as we move forward in design, this will be refined and we'll start talking about what the exterior materials are, what this is like. Uh, what this facility looks like. So this is an early concept. Um, as you can see, the multi-story housing <coughs> building uh, here, and then the one-story 
um, court and administrative space here. Uh, again, this is the main entrance uh, for public in this facility. You can see the existing Justice Center kind of behind that in the white back there and all of, all of this new parking that we're developing in, in front of the facility there. So the next few pages are variations on the same thing, just a few more shots so you can kind of see what that concept looks like in a little bit more detail. Yeah. Uh, one thing to point out here is the vehicle sally port for entrance uh, uh, movement uh, in the arresting officers and, and things like that uh, into the facility. Yeah, talk about the future. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, Dan. I, I, made, uh, I forgot all about that. <coughs> one thing that we have done uh, for future expansion, again, we have written, uh, indicated that this plan is for 586 beds, but we have tried to make a point of making sure this design accommodates your future needs. What happens in the future if, if and when you ever have to add on additional housing to get more beds. Um, the facility itself, the core functions of the facility, such as the kitchen and the laundry, those type of spaces are designed for capacity of 650. So the facility is designed to expand up to a, a 650 bed. Uh, even though we are currently designing 586, it could be expanded to handle uh, those additional uh, number of beds. Mm -hmm. So what we, what we have intentionally done with the concept is on the lowest level, the corridor on the lowest level comes directly out to the end of the building here. So that in the future, uh, when you need more housing, um, the existing Justice Center could be demolished and additional bed space could be filled at that location and you could connect the buildings at that point, if that makes sense. Okay. So it, it is, the, the concept is laid out intentionally for the idea of future expansion. There's no growth, there's no way to, to grow what we've got here is we have to go along to the, the old jail and, and build. Sales over. Yeah, that's the most likely that's area for you. Or if you can't, you can't go on, the, on top of that justice yes, center with sales. Yes, sir. Yeah. That, that can't be done. And you can't go any higher. Right, we're pretty much at the limit of the height restrictions zone. Yes. Okay, so any growth would have to go somewhere else. Toward the, toward the existing justice center. Yes, sir. But there is ample property for that. It's county owned. And it would just require the demolition of that. The, the, what we call the old justice center at that point. So. Bill, on the parking situation, uh, what about the parking lot to the south of the uh, uh, rescue squad building? That for the old jail? Are you including that too? That would be part of it. Okay, thank you. That's better. Yeah, but there's a parking lot that's already in existence over there that where the Oak uh, County Jail used to be, and that our property. And I was wondering if he was including that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So again, just a few more exterior images of the building there. Just a few um, additional con uh, images for you to see. That's the front door, the, the main main entrance of the building. Again, yeah, the thought was, from a conceptual standpoint, that that's kind of a justice concept. You've got court functions. We wanted a civic dignity to the building. And it's obviously a, a contemporary building, but it's uh, use of brick and, and, um, and columns, colonnades, and, and those sort of things. We wanted to make sure that people knew that there's a, a dignity of, uh, and respect for the legal process that occurs in the building. And it has a, 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 a I, I think, a... You know, it doesn't look like a, a fortress, but it looks, you know, has a, a certain civic dignity to what we're shooting for in the development of designs. And the housing units on the windows, how was that addressed where you have the requirements to meet their lighting, yet you don't have a possibility of getting out? Because I, I can't tell for sure, but on the side of this building, there appear to be... Uh, so. So, so again, uh, there are windows and um, uh, mesh screen happening on the ends of these rec yards here. That will provide enough daylight into the, into the depth of the day rooms here uh, to, to meet those daylight requirements. What about natural light into the living quarters? That, that provides that. Um, oh, just from that 
Yes, sir. And there's no windows on the side. Correct. The cell doors have glazed uh, panes in them, so we borrow that natural light. The idea is really to put the, uh, the largest amount of natural daylight into the day room space where they're eating their meals. We found that that is better at, for uh, improved behavior in those units and common effect to have that presence of natural light in the daytime when they're going to be out in the day room versus their cells. You know, whenever you had the, the old traditional way of putting those cell windows, the inmates would try to tear out, break out of there, and scratch them up. They use that as, a, as kind of a track to to try to communicate out them because they're in the privacy of their cells. So the, the National Institute of Corrections has allowed us to bar the natural light from the day room to comply with the natural requirement inside the cells. This is okay, much thanks. less damage that occurs to the building. Are there any sales for an handicap individual? Yes, yeah, sir. Each each pod has has a sale there uh, for accessible purposes. The standard requirement they yeah, require right. one in every house. Any questions before three? Great questions in there. So that's the, the new building, the design and the look of, of the new building. So what happens to the existing Justice Center uh, here and uh, just like the 1979 building and then the, the annex that uh, was built about 10, 15 years ago. Um, the Sheriff's Department would stay in the uh, existing building. Uh, they would get use of uh, what is now the Circuit Court Clerk space and Judge Collins' courtroom. And that's about 2,400 square feet that the 